ladies and gentlemen of the Facebook world, welcome to Timely Live. This is this is my first Timely Live. You'll have to excuse me. I'm moderately nervous, um, and I've been thinking about this live all day. We've only got thirty minutes, so I the 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 two women that are with me right now i had a conversation with them last week and it was epic it was meant to be a 10 minute this is what our facebook live conversation is going to be about and it ended up being yeah. longer than i'm allowed to admit to <laughs> so um it is my greatest pleasure we will be talking about diversity and inclusion in the hair and beauty world and in the workplace you don't even have to be in the hair and beauty world, I think, to gain a lot from this conversation. So I would very much love to introduce you to Mary. Uh, she's on that side of me. Mary is working at Timely. Her role is the first of its kind in Australia and New Zealand. She has had an epic media career. And now Timely have the honor of having her on board mary. Oh, that is so kind that is so kind <laughs> mary can you just briefly tell everyone what your amazing role is because i won't do it the justice it deserves well thank you um for that intro um i don't know I, I think the honor is mutual actually but i'm the chief people and inclusion officer at timely uh and my role is broad and wide across human resources, employee relations and public relations. So not only is it a core uh, people, HR, people experience role, it's also around how we share the importance of an inclusive culture externally as well as we do internally. And uh, while I've only been here a short time, I'm absolutely loving it and excited to be having this conversation with you two fabulous ladies. So thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you for being here. I'm, um, I can't wait for people to get to know you over the coming weeks and months and uh, life of at your life at Timely, which let's then head over to my next speaker. Um, Rumbi is someone that I heard on a podcast and I was like, how do I have this person in my life? She started in the hair industry after working in nursing and the girl just like is taking Australian hair by storm, Australian curly hair. I hope she can help me out one day. Um, and she's just like leaps and bounds in the hair industry because of her specialty in Afro and curls and therefore an incredible person to have talking to us about diversity. Mary, no, sorry, Zoom. oh my God, I'm so nervous guys. Rumbi, I need to calm down and just like take a chill. Have a breath, have a breath. We're all good. Have a breath. <laughs> Rumbi, can you please just briefly tell the people yeah. what you do um, while I take a breath? <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for having me to the Timely team. All of you, Jazz, Mary, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Rumbi Mutiwa and I'm the founder of Rumbi & Co, which is a curl specializing salon in Chippendale, Sydney. And we specifically focus on wavy, curly and Afro textures. Now it's a little bit of a challenge because people are like, wait, what, what do you mean? Do you curl people's hair? Kind of, but what we do is uh, we are in the business of building people's confidence through education so they can actually understand their how to manage their own hair and hopefully in others that will allow them to then dominate in other spaces of their lives because most curly hair people actually understand that there's challenges around like the psychology of uh, I call it the psychology of curls you know there is a psychology that is attached to having curly hair that can impede people from a from um I guess living life fully and so that's what we do we build people's confidence through curl education so i totally okay. agree i totally and last week we were talking and mary was asking me why all of my promo photos that i have of myself are me with straight hair yeah and i said it's because i don't feel like a professional person yep. when my hair is all out and curly. Yeah. Um, I feel like it's a fine line with curls between you look amazing and did you take your medication? It's very, very subtle. Right. Line. 
which is <laughs> interesting, which is partly why we created a product line as well and an academy to teach hairdressers. So the product line was around consumers and we able to give them simple techniques to be able to live live freely because what's professional hair, right? Like, um, and mostly what's actually happened is that people will always go on and put you to have your hair straightened all day, every day, um, and not actually enhance curl. And so what we actually do is teach people to do that. And many a time it actually stop people from having keratins and you swap them over for product and technique. And so, yeah, so pretty much that's what we do. It's, it's fun. It's, I think it's amazing. And I definitely will have Thanks. to say hi one day now just quickly guys everyone you have to know mary and rumbi are both available in the next um week at hair festival they've got different classes you would be crazy if you missed out on them so mary what is the class that you're doing with timely we are doing an education session around uh, inclusion, essentially, in the hair industry. Why an inclusive hair salon is good for the world uh, and good for your business. So I'm really looking forward to uh, hosting this education session with three amazing panellists, Christina, Chrissy and Gareth. Uh, Monday the 14th of June, track eight at the Carriage Works uh, Event Centre from 9.15 in the morning. So if you are a hairdresser in Sydney, you're going to all the parties on Sunday night. We're the first event on the Monday. We will have, uh, we will have Baraka. Uh, I will have lots of long blacks floating around the stage. Monday the 14th of June at 9.15. And I'm really excited. A really, really robust comprehensive, valuable conversation uh, around the importance of having an inclusive and diverse salon. So that's what we're doing. That is awesome. So guys, go to the Timely website, Facebook page, Instagram to find out more or Hair Festival to find out more about Mary's class. I promise we do have a really great conversation coming up, but just quickly for those who are interested, Rumbi has a class as well at Hair Festival. Take it away, Rumbi. So it's it's Saturday, actually on Monday the fourteenth as well at nine fifteen I have nine fifteen a.m. Um, that we're actually going to be on stage. So um, what we're actually going to be doing, Mary, I'd love to have uh, to to your class. I'm going to get a recording if I can. Um, but uh, nine fifteen a.m. We're actually going to be teaching people uh, that we actually do just so people have a bit of an idea. So we're working with um, obviously early and afro texture as well and the idea is to just dispel the fears because a lot of the times it's what people what people don't know creates a fear and then that actually is what then has people you know um i, I guess stepping away from in, indulging themselves in working with curly hair so that's what i'm going to be doing collaborating with ghd um we're actually going through and talking about um their hot like i guess hot tools how do we use hot curly hair so we don't kill the curl but instead we actually encourage curls oh my god i need that in my life um <laughs> okay this is very exciting all the links to their classes will be posted after this um uh goes live and you can go to hair festival timely or to rumbi and mary's instagram pages um, are you guys on Facebook? Give me a nod if you are. Yeah. Individually. individually, you can go to their Facebook pages and find out more. But let's get into this conversation. So we're talking about inclusion and diversity. Um, I'm just going to be frank. I'm going to be really frank right now. I am a solid white girl who doesn't live in a world where I have to change my name when I go to apply for a job because my name might weird people out. And it's, it's a subject that's really close to my heart because I have so many people from so many backgrounds that walk through my doors and in life and I see what the struggle is and how real it is for people. And interestingly, on my Instagram page this week, I did ask a few questions that people answered and one was, do you understand why we still have to have the inclusion and diversity conversation? And a couple people didn't understand why. So Mary, just straight, straight off the bat, first of all, can you please tell everyone when we talk about inclusion and diversity, 
Who are the members of our public that we're talking about specifically, do you feel? Well, firstly, I think we're talking about minority groups uh, who may be underrepresented in society, uh, in organisations and across communities. And there are many dimensions to a conversation specifically around diversity and inclusion. And the easiest way to explain this is to actually just acknowledge that the simple fact is we are all different. Oh my goodness gracious. Yeah. We are all different. And that's a great thing. Jazz, mm -hmm. the fact that you haven't had to navigate the world like some others, i.e. Rumbi and I, mm -hmm. is not, that's not your fault. It mm -hmm. is just what it is. And acknowledging that, and I think that is something that we embrace hugely at Timely, uh, because we also know deep down that we are also the same. I mean, I essentially need what you need to survive, fresh air, nutrients, fruit and vegetables, wine, water, <laughs> fresh air, you know, why, it, which is why a diverse workplace essentially matters also. You know, it matters because why we're having this conversation to begin with at the hair festival, but at the end of the day, not because it's good for businesses, but because it's actually the right thing to do and then it's good for business. Mm. So that is my, yeah, that's my summary of what I think diversity and inclusion is and who sits in that category, underrepresented, um, marginalized groups. Mm. I think that is very well said. Um, Rumbi, if you don't mind me asking, is there a time in your life that you can, that you are happy to share where you, if the reason this conversation exists is because of people not understanding you or a misconception of you because you're different and you don't come, you know, you weren't born. <laughs> Absolutely. Look, I think um, <laughs> coming from Africa, I can tell you that most people just think Africa's poor, struggling, starving individual. So constantly I got the, you know, um, oh my God, you must be so lucky to be here. And I was like, um, yeah, I, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I think so. And, and for me, it was the context in which I, I just thought, you know what, I did grow up, uh, um, I guess, more privileged than many, um, and, and not only in Africa, but around the world, and I'm aware of that. And so for me, uh, I think coming here and then having that, I was just like, oh yeah, sure, yeah, you know, I think it's I'm lucky. But I grew up with my parents, um, I think my, my parents always told me, they're like, look, at some stage you're gonna go to school and you're gonna go overseas. And I was like, okay, and I thought it was gonna be the UK, but when the time came, it was, I was like, yeah, no, let's go Australia. Let's go where no one else is going. So, because in Zimbabwe, everyone was going to the States or the UK. So I moved here and it was really interesting then how things started to change for me because it was, the first thing for me was like, why are the houses so small? I was like, what happened? What is happening with everything? Why are you guys, oh my God. And I struggled, I would call my mom, I'm like, this place is different to what I expected it to have been. And it was interesting because what I would get from people was like, how does it feel living in a house? And I'm like, hmm, as opposed to what? You know, so these are general conversations I would have had um, initially. And, and I remember just thinking, oh, it was my, my utopia of what I thought this would have been was just blown out of like, it let's put it this way I was shook because <laughs> I was like what why do people think we are uncivilized and that was where that's and and primitive that was what I always got often so but then fast forward to my hair journey I think it was when my sister had hair loss due to stress and so uh we couldn't find it, somebody who could do her hair and I remember saying to her you're being lazy. You can never wear your hair like this if we're at home. And she was just like, I can't find anybody. I was like, oh, that's ridiculous. I went out, searched for somebody who could work on curly hair, who was on, on Afro hair, who was qualified. And I couldn't find anybody. And I just thought, this, this can't be a thing. So I just figured, you know what? It can't be rocket science. I'm going to start doing your hair. We'll make it work. And that's how it started. Started doing her hair, then began to do her friends' hair, their friends, and then it became a thing. And so 
as time went by, yeah, sure. Nobody knew how to do our hair. I would walk into places with my hair chemically straightened and people would just not know what to do with it. And, but then at that point, they're just looking at me, the person, right? Not asking me questions. Is your hair chemically straightened or is it, you know, or is it blow dried straight? Just so I, just so you have an idea, right? But if it's straight, it's straight for the most part of it. You know what I mean? But people didn't get that. And so you go from being charged a lot of money to then um, for, for a basic blow dry that would take 20 minutes to blow dry my hair because I'm next to, well, I'm wearing extensions, but I'm naturally, I have next to no hair. Um, and I'm like, it's 20 minutes to blow back this baby. And I would get charged three times as much. So I think over time, I then realized that, and as I had done, I'd gone into college. And from that point, I went into, uh, I started into working for some of Australia's top salons. And I realized that people were afraid of working with curly hair. So I then realized it wasn't an Afro hair thing. It was a curly hair thing. So then I was like, oh, shucks, it's wavy. It's curly hair and it's, it's, and it's Afros. It's like, this is interesting. And so I started doing people, you know, detangling people's hair and then it was painless and doing all these things. And then I just realized, oh my God, um, the, there's a gap. But through that, it was just a client who actually said, you should be a texture specialist. And I was like, what's a texture specialist? No one's Googling texture specialist. <laughs> you know, and that's how that started. But over time, I realized that most of those people were from, well, were from certain ethnic backgrounds. Um, and they're the people that have been catered to. It's people of Afro descent. It's people of Pacific Islands, people from um, Southeast, Southeast Asian descent. It's people of Irish background, Irish and Scottish. Um, you've got, um, you know, I feel like I've left somebody out, but there's a lot. 65% of the world's population have curly hair. And that actually then came to me as a huge shock. And I just started to research and, and I realized what that was actually doing to the person and inside. And I, and I realized we all had the same situations. We all had decreased confidence. We all were struggling in so many different ways. And so for me, I thought, um, what there is there is a gap in the way we look at beauty and uh, which is why in a salon we don't have pictures because I refuse to have pictures of another individual um, when yeah. we are we are living on the runway that is our life that is very interesting I think I in my years of working backstage at fashion week um, down in Melbourne we we would have for a long time and it's getting better now in the fashion industry we would have the token um colored girl the to the token asian girl the token you know and what i have found over the last few years is and, that and by the way you can yeah. say black oh okay great <laughs> okay it's all right because because I, I am what i am i'm proud of it love it you know what i mean like like and that's most that's most black people they're all right with it it takes a while there's a lot of other stuff but you can it's okay you can say it Right. Do you know what? Even that, I really appreciate it because I was like, oh, I just don't know. And I'm so terrified of saying the wrong thing. But yeah. those girls, because of the Sudanese girls in particular, they would come to Fashion Week and they would bring their own makeup because no one in Australia knows how to do makeup on Sudanese. Like the most beautiful black skin I've ever seen in my life. And no one knew how to handle it. We know how to handle it now, but there's still so many makeup artists that have no understanding of what to do with it. And these girls do not trust makeup artists. They are so sus every time they rock up to a job. Yeah. Mary, can I ask you to share some of your experiences around or your ex experience around being part of a minority group and how people have treated you? I know it's not always great to talk about those things, so... Oh, look, it's well documented, unfortunately, or fortunately, whichever way you look at it, that I've I've had my fair share of meanies uh, in my life, both professionally and personally. Uh, and as I've gravitated through my career to get to where I am today, I truly do believe that people are on a journey. Um, you know, I think back to... Um, situations and scenarios I've been in across my career that have been 
I've been dealt with poorly because of who I am. And I live unapologetically being me. I don't know how to be any other way. Um, I don't think it's necessary to talk about various scenarios or situations I've been in before. But what I would say is that actually it is everyone's responsibility to treat people with kindness and respect. I don't give a shit where you're from or where, how, what family you were born into or what job you have or how much money you earn. Having respect for others who are different to you is what is vital. And I think as I've gravitated my voice um, and tried my very best to champion change across the many areas I've tried to do that over my career, uh, the one thing I know for sure is that there is a vested interest. There is a lot of curiosity out there more now than ever before. You know, 15, 20, or well, 23 years ago when I began part-time work, there was a lot of defensiveness. I was incredibly different. I looked different. Um, I, I sounded different, made more so complex by the fact that I have an identical twin brother, although he's not that identical to me anymore these days. But uh, yeah, kids were awful to me. I don't remember a day of my education where I wasn't bullied at school, but that's made me the person I am today that is able to be able to have difficult conversations. I've made a career out of it and I'm not done yet. I think gathering acceptance by people, for people, uh, and underrepresented environments is key. And I won't stop until I'm done. So um, this is a healthy and wealthy conversation to be having. Um, and we could talk about it all day. So, oh, my God. We could, Mary, how do we bring, how can businesses, hair, beauty, bring active change into their environments, both with clients and staff? around oh look there's such a broad range of um answers to that jazz i mean it's about education we need to educate ourselves so that we understand what difference looks like and whether you're a salon with two people whether you're a salon with 200 are they represented are they are your teams represented of your customer and your client uh, and if you were standing outside the door wanting to come into the salon and you were from a minority group, could you look into the salon and see someone represented from your minority group? I think it's well documented uh, around the place that I've, uh, that I've used um, all sometimes the wrong channels to talk about my passions for this, but organizations who work in the best intentions and have a purpose and a why is often those that do better. Organizations who don't give tinkers uh, about the direction of their business or who they have through their door or how they make their money often don't land anywhere. So I think if you have the best intentions, you get educated and you encourage your people and those that are working with you, partners, uh, whether they're suppliers, industry, I mean, there's a big funnel of folk in the procurement and purchasing world that have a lot of power over who they have supplying uh, through third party. And that is something that I have championed conversations around in previous work that I've done. So we, I, I do, and I said this the other night when we talked for our one hour and 40 minute call, it was only meant to be for 25 minutes, um, that we, you know, it is 2021 now and having conversations like, oh, well, we don't know what, they don't know what they don't know, or that, th you know, it's because they don't get it. It's no longer an excuse. For me personally, it's not how we roll at Timely anyway. Well said, well said. Um, Rumi, I don't know if you're aware, uh, but the Oscar Awards, they've created an inclusion ruling and the mm. inclusion ruling will be in place by 2025. 2025, yeah, yeah. Good, so they like the, which allows for the movies coming through to do their thing. But basically if you're planning to produce a movie right now, you need to have, I believe it's a 30%, um, uh, a 30% 30, 30 of your people need to come from diverse backgrounds. And there's a huge criteria and it actually will go for in front of the camera and behind, and you need to meet one or the other in some capacity. Yeah. Why so people kind of think, oh, but what if they're the best person for the job? And it's like, yes, but I can tell you guys that like a good chunk of my friends are like solid white girls. That's it, end story. So if I'm looking for people to do stuff with, like sessions with Timely, I'm gonna end up with a lot of white chicks, right? What, 
why do you think it's so important for business to be the like the front facing part of of diversity and inclusion changing does that make sense yeah yeah i think change is going to be happening or and has already been happening also in small business than it has in large organizations mm. so uh, reasons why i feel like change can happen quickly is because i do this in my business if something wasn't working today it is not going to be happening tomorrow mm. Um, and I, I know that that can be very, it, it can be very challenging sometimes for the team, but my, my, isn't working. why continue on with it? And I, I, I think I love the sentiment of what, well, I guess, of, I love the sentiment of diversity and inclusion, but it's also, it also burdens me that we still have to have that conversation. Mm. It's like, why should we be having this conversation? businesses should be doing this it's not a question of um do i want to you have to but you know what what i love about where we're going as well as people is that we're now starting to seek for things ourselves we're starting to seek for information ourselves because we're no longer depending on traditional media to give us and feed us everything that we know so people are starting to step up and speak up and speak out and so i'm I feel that if businesses do not have a why, like what Mary was saying before, if, and if your why does not include, uh, I, I guess, allowing a safe environment for people, I think there is going to be some shock coming their way. But businesses are actually taking swift changes. So, like, so, so for me, um, and, and if I can give, you know, an example, and I remember this actually burdened me for a while. I had a client who came into the salon a while ago and she sat in the, she sat in the seat, two seconds, we're in, hey, how are you going? My name is Ruby. I'm back, I'm going to be taking care of you today. And then she, she immediately says, I'm trans. I was like, oh, oh okay. I'm, uh, okay. Now that shook me because I thought, why do you why do you feel like you have to justify who don't make me emotional sorry Ooh. Mm. it's you know it sucks that people go through life that way i remember how i felt in that moment because i thought why do you have to feel you have to justify to me who you are you know and i was like man that sucks and i said to her I did eventually have a conversation with her. She's still my client. And I was like, I'm sorry that you feel like you have to go through life doing that because just as a human, it doesn't matter who you are, you shouldn't have to live life. That way. So businesses have to be in a space where they have people feeling safe because we're getting people, you're getting someone's money. You owe them and you owe the local community and the rest of the world. Um, you, you owe them a lot as well. As much as we keep saying support local businesses, support local community, support support people around us because you can't ask people to give you something that you can't give back. Well, I just I, I I you know I'm sitting here in awe of the conversation with you, Ruby, and I and I and I obviously relate to um, the dialogue that you have had there with your with your custom with your client. I mean, I think also if I can add to that, Jazz, we often need to push ourselves to broaden our horizons. And it is our, it is of course easy for a group of people like ourselves who are sitting here sharing common experiences in a common frame of reference. But, you know, the benefit we gain from exposing ourselves to people we wouldn't normally engage with is a huge part of this. And Rumbi, you're well-traveled and well-balanced in a beautiful, in New Zealand, we say wahine tua, uh, a woman uh, empowering other women and uh, you know my salon experiences are vast and varied and we talked about them the other night but which probably shouldn't go out to the world um because they're a bit cheeky but um you know I think light bulb moments like what you're saying you've experienced are valuable because there will be people that hear and see what we're talking about who won't even understand the dialogue because they've not they've not lived or they've not experienced and again yeah. emphasizing it isn't their fault the world is moving on it is no longer what it was oh. and 
it won't no longer be in another 10 or 15 years and in another 10 or 15 years we are evolving um so yeah and it's interesting because she putting me and and my business on some register i can't remember what she said i'm like there is a there is a place that she's like yes a safe space for transgender women and uh, well no well she said no she said transgender peoples and i was like what are you freaking kidding me and it broke it burnt me because i just thought why can't you just treat somebody like a person because if we always approach life in a space like how would i want to be treated you 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 would change the way that you approach every single day you know because Mm -hmm. then you're thinking, how would I want to be treated? Would I want someone to, to, to segregate me? Would I want somebody to demean me? Would I want somebody to, um, to uh, upset me through how they're communicating? How would I, what conversations would I want to be hearing? And the same is, is, is worthy of another person too, you know? Yeah, well said. I think it's just treat people how you want to be treated. Um, and I really like what you said, guys, uh, Mary, about is if, if someone from any part of a minority community looks into your door and of your workplace and they see people like you, that's why aren't they seeing that? If I go into a shop and I see someone who's different to me, that's where I start to learn to be, these, these are the people in my community and it's not so weird or odd. Does that make sense? Did I say that correctly? Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think business is really important because business is what people interact with every day. And so we're going to learn and see and be part of the world if business has more diversity and inclusion. Um, And can I just add that even if there aren't people that look like them, because most of my team actually have some way somehow happened to have been of some sort of black descent. And um, I, I think for us, it's always allowing that space because it's not only how things look, it's also how you receive people as well. So it's just them being in a space when when somebody walks now, people obviously through the community found out more about Rumbi and Co. And they're like, oh, there's another black woman who's doing this. And then I get more applicants for black. But then when they come in, it's just like, hey, it's okay. You don't need to justify. It's also in our words as well. It's just like, hey, it's all right. Don't worry about that that you don't need to tell you don't need to justify yourself you're enough mm. and then and then we continue on and we, we we start having conversation and just make sure that the conversation is not is not ignorant and now we've got into google you yeah. you know have mm. questions and these conversations are being had everywhere it's about like going out there find out a little bit more about you know about this other minority group you don't understand and then you might actually want to throw yourself in, um, in among the, the group as well and then once you do that you actually realize oh my goodness um mm. magnetic and things of things you, there's so many things that you'd be exposed to that you never would have been you know i think just quickly while i was researching this subject and I was thinking of like ways that business can actively do some things. Mm. It's, it's simple things. Like if you go to visit my Instagram page, it's majority, it's all majority white chicks. Like I, I need to have eyebrows that are Asian and black and Hispanic and Oh, I'm coming to Sydney in a couple of weeks. You can do my brows because they look terrible. (laughs) (laughs) I'm terrible. Yeah, we, okay. we will we will make time in the busyness that I have in Sydney to get my brows done by you, Jazz. I am coming to see you in Surrey Hills. Okay, it's a thing. Um, and I also and then Ruby, you can do my hair. <laughs> no, I've got you. We're just going to be trading trading services left, right, and centre. It's going to be amazing. Um, I've got nothing to give you. I can bring some wine, but that's about it. <laughs> done. All the Barocca, like you said, for your class. Um, and also, just quickly, you can. There are government, um, pl- like, um, no, I don't want to say grants, that is the wrong word, but there are things in place for uh, having people with disability come and work in your space, and the government will give you money to help you pay for the extra training that they require. And there are big companies like Officeworks here in Australia who... Um, they employ a very like large amount of people with disability, some of whom are my clients, which is why I even know about it. Um, so I think if you're looking to create um, more diversity and let people know that you are a safe space 
and you're all about that, start Googling how you can, I don't know, get government grants with disability, make your place something that someone in a wheelchair can get into and use a bathroom. Um, I don't know, make your Instagram page a page where when people visit, they see other people like themselves and you're posting about the things that like are important to them. I think that was like a buzzer that we have to like end story guys. Um, Cause it's been minutes. I just had like a little like ding guys, just quickly. Um, last words, quick last words, Mary. Oh, look, this is, a, you know, no matter where you begin, as long as you are beginning on a journey to ensuring that you have a more diverse and inclusive environment, whatever, wherever, however that looks, and uh, be kind to yourself, because, you know, we're all being institutionalized and set and taught a certain way, and we've got to cut, some people have to unpick some of that, so be kind to yourself, because it is a journey for everyone, even me. Thank you. Very well said. Rumbi, last words. Try and keep it to last words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, look, I would say that don't be afraid of getting into uh, being inclusive. Jump on board. You know, it's, it's definitely something that is worth it. People will love it. And I can definitely say that it is, uh, it is worth it because I've experienced that in my life. And you would just be making the world a better place. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen of Facebook, you guys have been legends for sticking around. Ruby and Mary, please don't go anywhere. I'd like to say goodbye to you one more time um, backstage. And um, this will be reposted to Facebook. And if you ever have any questions, please message us. Otherwise, find Mary and Ruby on Instagram and Facebook uh, and Hair Festival to go to their classes. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.